In mid-2020, Kenyans woke up to shocking details that indicated 4,000 teenage girls were pregnant as a direct outcome of COVID-19 lockdowns. Teenage pregnancy was already an issue that development partners in conjunction with the Kenyan government were struggling to address. The lockdowns saw a spike in the numbers of teen pregnancies. Talking about sex in the Kenyan culture has proved to be a cultural taboo, but this has been one of the blind spots that continues to be challenged by the youth and feminist movements. Someone who has taken to challenge it despite her young age is Nima Nzani Kasim Nzani, who is the founder and president of the Hijab Mentorship Program. This is a young women-led organization that focuses on sexual reproductive health and rights, gender-based violence, and equipping young girls with financial skills in Kwale County. Nima shares that the conservativeness of her community has led to a silence that has contributed to teen pregnancies. Uh, growing up in Kwale County, I realized that young women especially are not allowed to raise their opinion on different several matters. And I'm looking at, you know, historical backgrounds, I'm looking at cultural norms, I'm looking at, you know, speaking and being told you are a woman, you shouldn't speak. As you can see, I'm a Muslim and that is the perspective of who you should be as a young Muslim woman from a very conservative community. But then when I pursued journalism, I asked myself, why are women not allowed to speak? And why are some of them okay with that decision to not speak? And then I realized that the elder women in my community, they never went to school because they were made to think that education is haram. Haram is forbidden. It's not that important. And for this, it has meant that a lot of young women do not have an understanding of, you know, the basic human rights, of what their human rights are, what their women rights are. And as a result, young women are not having enough access. They're facing so many barriers and challenges when it comes to accessing resources and information on sexual reproductive health and rights and gender-based violence in my community. And when we come to look at the issue of sex education, in my community, we have this perspective that we are very religious. Religious, we're not having sex, we're waiting. Yeah, we're waiting until marriage. And so we don't have to have conversations on comprehensive sexuality education. But then when we look at the situation in the ground, we have rising cases of teenage pregnancies. We have rising cases of young mothers. So the question comes down to who are these young women who are actually involved in sex and who are these who are involved in sex? The culture of silence around sex has continued to perpetuate teenage pregnancies and especially for those that are struggling economically. In October 2019, during the ICPD 25 conference, Kenya through President Uhuru Kenyatta made commitments which included that Kenya would put its efforts in eliminating teenage pregnancies, new adolescent and youth HIV infections, and harmful practices such as child marriages, while at the same time ensuring universal access to friendly, quality reproductive health services and information to the youth and adolescents by 2030. Deliver for Good campaign that recently organized a media training for grassroots women champions like Nima and everyone featured here has five areas it focuses on and improving access to sexual reproductive health is a key area. Even though COVID-19 exacerbated an already dire situation, there have been interventions in different communities that have been addressing teen pregnancies and reducing the numbers successfully. One of those is Eunice Otieno, who is an upcoming 2022 aspirant in the Market Milimani Ward in Kisumu County. I work for Association of Physically Disabled of Kenya, Kisumu branch. Um, I also run a CBO, a CBO called Able Differently. In Able Differently, we help in amplifying the voices of women with disability in Kisumu County. So actually, my nature of work 
is that uh, in relation to empowerment of persons with disability in Kisumu County. I'm also a role model uh, in um, an organization called Cheshire Disability Service Kenya, where we empower girls uh, with disability. Eunice explains that even though they started with the girls living with disabilities, the school asked that the other students be included in the mentorship program. This is because the girls were not only performing better, but rates of teenage pregnancies went down. Initially, we started with the girls with disability as per the program, but uh, most of the schools that I mentor saw the need of us now expounding that in relation to the entire school. So you find that in, uh, in the team, uh, most of our girls' uh, self-esteem has been established well. And uh, actually, uh, in most of these schools, the issue of teenage pregnancy that we are currently addressing in reducing uh, the poverty levels have also been addressed. So actually, you find that even as the county is talking about the rate of teenage pregnancy during this uh, time of COVID, that, but you find that in these schools that we mentor, the rate has really gone down. It is something that I will advocate that if it is uh, done in the whole of counties, then actually uh, our girls are going to be empowered. But what makes the mentorship program unique? Uh, majorly what we do in those schools is uh, addressing the issues of self-esteem. If you work on the self-esteem of, of, a, of a girl, then you realize that uh, even the performance rate is improved because now they are able to participate in class and even if they are outside the, the, the school, they are able now to connect well with the parents and uh, some of the maybe men that they will meet and they will want to talk about relationship, they are able to articulate issues around that area. For Monica Yator, who is the director and founder of Indigenous Women and Girls in Baringao, empowering girls through mentorship by equipping and teaching them to create their own dignity kits has proved sustainable. We train women about reproductive health that is uh, them planning their families and also having correct children that they can feed on. And also with the girls, we empower girls to know that they have a right over their bodies. That means they, we give them power to say no to sex and early marriages. Uh, we do provide dignity kids, but we train them to do, have it at home, to even go to tailor shops and make them for them because it's cheaper and sustainable for them. Because if we say we're providing sanitary towels, it's not sustainable. So we train them to make them. Okay. Because if you give them a pad, one pad now, they lose it for four days, it's over. So what happens next month? So we want to make the sanitary kids sustainable for the girls because they come from poor backgrounds. So most of the families cannot afford a pad. So instead, the girls have to resort for so many vices to get the pads. Deliver for Good campaign continues to commit to partner with national and local organizations and the media to ensure there is an improved access to sexual and reproductive health and rights in Kenya.